series two of my podcast, Innovation, where we get to hear the wisdom and experiences of incredible women in science and technology. My aim with the conversations that you'll hear on this show is to learn more about STEM, science, technology, engineering, and maths, and hear from STEM people who are from diverse backgrounds who tend to be really underrepresented. Essentially, through innovation, I want us to get smarter and more knowledgeable about innovation, but also bring a voice to the voiceless who are actually doing STEM. I was one of those people. I grew up in a very stem household where we were raised to be curious about the world around us and figure out how things worked. Maybe that's the reason why I ended up studying mechanical engineering. It taught me so much about how things function, which was really useful, but I must admit that it was actually life itself that taught me that not everything can be explained with neat little mathematical equations. Life is messy, it doesn't always unfold in a straight line, and here on Innovations, I want to hear how other people in STEM, particularly minorities, have dealt with that. This week, I talked to Anna Maria Miko, a Demerage analyst. I'm Anna Maria Miko, and I work in shipping as a Demerage analyst. So what does a Demerage analyst do? I've never heard of that. Mm, So it's a very technical thing within shipping and a very specific thing. Um, I need to negotiate the time spent in port with the oil companies who hire our ships to go from A to B. And if they spend more than the contractual time at each port, we can claim money from them. But because it's based on a contract, it's not black and white or straightforward necessarily. So we go back and forth and in plain words, we argue. (laughs) So I argue with very powerful companies about um, the time spent in port. That's so interesting because, um, Mm. you know, you're not my conventional guest because usually um, who we have on these podcasts and um, YouTube videos are um, people who are basically from a science background and so we're not claiming that you have one but what you do is very um, uh, similar to um, the sort of environments that women in STEM find themselves which is you know a very male-dominated world um, where you have to really learn how to stand up for yourself. Is mm. that right? Yes, absolutely. And it's, uh, yeah, it's basically full of men. The women is very like the minority in in shipping world in general. Um, so it's not, um, it's not the easiest thing to be in this world, I have to say. It's very specific. It's very small, if you like, because it's a very specific um, industry. Uh, with ha- it has its advantages and disadvantages, but um, you definitely need to learn how to deal with powerful men or basically men in charge. I mean, I must say that um, throughout my time in engineering, I really felt like I was um, having to deal with, I, did, I didn't realise this at the time in my early 20s, but looking back, I was dealing with a lot of male ego, or let's just say ego, so that we're not getting gender specific. Mm. Like I was dealing with a lot of ego. And I think what tends to happen um, in very male dominated careers is that uh, women can feel very intimidated, not just women, but people of minorities can feel very intimidated. Uh, It sounds like you've kind of been in those similar environments. How have you dealt with that? So uh, I also started in my 20s in this kind of world and I've been in this world for 15 years. So by now I kind of know myself and know what I'm dealing with. But when I was in my 20s, it was all like fascinating because shipping is a very um, rare kind of industry. And back then I was living in Hungary and I got into shipping by completely by chance. Um, I was working in IBM and um, I one day I got fed up 
because two of my colleagues left and I had to do their job for the same salary. And it went on and on and on for months and months. And in IBM and in usually in, in the American companies, they have this system called shadowing. So you can go and learn how other departments work and then you can apply to work somewhere else within the company. So I was trying to do that. And then they said, no, no, you can't even do that now because you just have to do your job. And you know, when you just have one of those days when you're like, that's it, you know, I'm done. So I was going home on the tube. I really clearly remember this. And I met a guy who I went to college with and he was working in HR in Axon. And they had quite a big office, still have in Budapest. And, um, and I said, where do you work? <laughs> And I just sent him and I didn't know he's in HR in this oil company that I never heard of in my life. I didn't even know what that is. And I just sent my CV and they hired me within two weeks. So that's how I got into the I had no idea what shipping is. I had no idea what I need to do. Um, and it was all interesting. And when they when they told me all about it's very technical, it's, it's a very specific kind of area of shipping that I need to kind of deal with. And I was like, oh my God, like, what is this? And I need to deal with like captains and ooh. so um, it was, it was interesting because it was new, but the office in Hungary, I didn't realize it at that time, but it's not the typical kind of shipping environment because it's just a kind of like, um, back office type of thing so there were no traders so I didn't know at that time what I'm what I'm getting myself into and then uh, my life turned out to be that I'm within a year starting the job that I'm moving countries so I moved to Dublin because uh, I used to be engaged and my partner at that time um got a job in Google in Dublin. So I moved with him and there was this one shipping company in Dublin, Italian. And um, my ex colleague was working with them and got my CV and I got hired in the first week. So very lucky. And that's where I got into like the, the really like the gist of it and started to recognize like all of this and oh my God, and here people travel for work. I was like, what oh, fantastic you know so I was you know when you're like 20 something it's like wow this is amazing you know and I I really learned how to so the Italian company that I was working with in Dublin it was also a family company so it was not only mostly men in charge but like men from the family in charge so there was like an added difficulty where I was a woman, I was pretty, that it, there is also like a factor that is not necessarily a good thing. Um, because you get kind of the bad attention that you don't want and you have done nothing wrong. And then women hate you because, oh, the guys, you know, like her. And it's just like, you know, so you, you get into this situation of like, what? I didn't do anything, I'm just existing. And I kind of find myself in like this limbo where I have a lot of attention from male, like audience that I'm, I don't necessarily want. And at the same time, girls are jealous or like intimidated by me, but I haven't, you know, acted on any of these things, if that makes sense. So that started then and it kind of, you know, went on and on um, until I think the last company that I work with, because, you know, as with the years, you kind of know this and know yourself and just, just the, the environment and the scenario becomes familiar. So you know how to work your way around it as you mature. Uh, but when you're like 20 something, you're like, oh my God, what am I doing? What is this? Why is this happening to me? Because um, you have no idea who you are what is this? And I believe that I know exactly why I ended up in shipping. I know why exactly I had to deal with this specific scenario with, with like the male 
and also like the working hard bit. So it's, there is this one thing that is just because of girls and boys stuff and then it kind of escalates. Um, but the other thing that also started in my, in the Italian company is that I'm very capable and very smart and I learn fast. So I do, I, I'm very efficient. And then people start to notice that. And what happens is like, oh, she can do this fine. And we just give her more. And then of course, and she can do this as well. And then they start to kind of take advantage of that. And they started to um, limit my holidays. That, oh, on this week, you can't take days off because we have to do this report. And I was like, but it's not even my job. I'm helping you to do this, but it's not in my actual contract. So why can't I go on a holiday on this specific day? And that's when I was kind of knowing that, okay, maybe this is not the right company for me. Um, and because my relationship fell apart uh, in the middle of all of this, and I was in a foreign country alone with all this kind of quite stressy kind of male industry. And I was very good at what I did in my job, but like the spiritual, like the emotional factor was quite confusing. And especially when you deal with like a heartbreak and um, like a breaking up your, of your engagement in the middle of this, it, it doesn't really help. So I didn't really know what I want to do with my life in general. And when this, situation escalated at work that's when I decided that, okay I think I I want to leave but I want to leave the country as well but I don't necessarily want to go back to Hungary so I just trusted that something will come along and and it did and I just got a job offer two weeks after that in, from Switzerland and I was hired like that and I went to Switzerland to something that was even harder but it was my path because these are like little stories but it's because now I'm looking back because I'm like 15 years you know down the line it's it was all like a movie where in the beginning you are like mm, this is great you know all these men fantastic and then you know you can do this and that and the other and then oh I just moved countries with this and then I was working even harder were even more used by my boss there and I did an even more specific job like I was an operator so operating ships in Switzerland which is very stressful you have to be on your phone all the time and you are coordinating with the captain of the ship and the oil company who hires the ship where to go what to do organize everything at the ports the agents the fuel for the ship. So you have to kind of run the whole case. And I learned that, that I thought I'm never gonna be able to do that. And I did it, but what it did, it turned me into someone I'm not. Because in Switzerland doing this job and it's, it was very isolating. I was in a very remote part of Switzerland. I was just coming out from my engagement of four years. So I felt very alone. And I thought being alone and being lonely is the same thing. So it taught me that being alone and being lonely are very different things. So that was my lesson there to come out from the relationship, not be clinging on to another one straight away, but learning how to be alone, because actually I'm quite an independent woman, but in my relationship, I grew quite dependent. So I kind of turned into someone I'm not. And then here I was doing this job that I had to be really tough, like a guy. And I'm not saying that this is wrong. It's, um, it's a personality thing that I'm just not. I can be tough, but I'm just, that's not the usual kind of the way I operate. And I remember my brother was coming to visit and I had to be always on my phone. And he said that, who are you? And I'm, me and my brother are really close. And when he said that, that was like, a, you know what? I don't know. I don't know who am I. 
with all these kind of situations, mostly triggered by male, whether it was my relationship or my job, or, you know, I was just like tossing and turning around in this kind of waves of, you know, karmic, you know, things in life. And how old were you when your brother asked you that? I was, I think, 29, and just before 30. What happened next? Um, then I really reflected and stopped. And I, I asked myself the question, so who are you? Why are you doing this? And the answer I got was because I thought the people who are doing this job are amazing because this is so difficult and so complicated that if I can do that, then I'm going to be like so cool, if that makes sense. And because in my job of doing the operators, then it also means that you work with the traders very closely because they are the ones who are making the deals. And the traders is who kind of makes up this whole industry. And they are 99% men. And they are the ones who, you know, with the slick suit, the nice haircut, the big watch, the earning like millions. And when I moved to London 10 years ago, I, I went into that kind of real, like seeing that physically how that works. And I worked into a smaller and now like a quite a large uh, trading companies. And I could really see like the hierarchy of what this is, is really, we are the guys, we bring in the money and all you do is you just kind of clean up our mess. And there is a sense of treating people differently all across um, shipping because of this. So there is like, a, oh, your job is just like that. Mm, okay, I, I'm not gonna really talk to you or even say hello. Um, and you would think this is a joke, but it's not. <laughs> it's an actual like, what, really? So um, I thought then that if I do this like operator and being this cool person, then I'm going to be, you know, closer to them who I thought they are like so cool, all these guys. And now that I'm seeing that and living in the actual, you know, environment for quite a long time, it's just basically I learned through a lot of stages that that's okay because that's for them, but it's not for me. It's, and I don't have to be doing a certain job to be accepted as, I don't know, even acknowledged as a person. Um, and I realized that all of this, like real journey is like a real tough, but it's a training from life to, for me to grow out of you are actually great as you are and you are capable and you don't need other people who have different standards to tell you that you're good enough and you don't have to do two zillion jobs at the same time just to prove that you can, you know you can. But it kind of took me quite a long time, you know, to get to this realization. Um, and that was definitely a big turning point after uh, my brother said, who, who are you? And I actually said to myself that I don't want to do this anymore. So I just want to go back to the job I was doing in Dublin and in Budapest, because it's something that I have the perfect skills for because you have to be very organized, proactive, talking to other people. You have to be kind of able to negotiate and build kind of bridges, but at the same time, standing your ground. 
but also you don't have to be on the phone 24 seven. You can have a life aside from your job. So it's not an all consuming thing like the operating part was. Um, and I chose to go back to that, even though I knew that in the industry, I'm just gonna be like, oh, you know, you just do that. Uh, and I was really happy about that choice. And I also decided for the first time in my life that I want to move to London for me. Because I moved out of Hungary because of my relationship. Then I moved out from Dublin, not to be there, but not to go home, just to kind of, I, just to figure it out. And I moved to London because I wanted to move to London, not because of anyone else, not because I didn't want to prove anything. I wanted to live in London and, and I did. So since I'm here for the past uh, 10 years, um, it's been a more dynamic progression because it's like the real, you know, a uh, culmination of everything happened to me here and I'm really grateful um, but looking back it's um, everything is an all really get to know who you are and get like a glimpse of an idea of how powerful you actually are with all these casting aside, these obstacles and masks that you learn to wear, to cope and to survive and to fit in and all of that. As I think, especially as women, we can all relate to it. But actually I was observing the, how the male side of this works. And you need to come in like as, as a relative young age and they all these young boys come in from like quite prestigious shipping schools. So they are quite bright and they come in because that is allegedly the path to become a trader because that's everyone's like dream that oh, because they, they are so rich, right? Which is, you know, very attractive. Um, but because these boys, they don't have their personalities quite developed yet because they are just about 20 or like very early 20s so nobody really knows then who they are you know so and then there are the traders like the big like real sharks and then they look up to them as like the role model and they are not necessarily all of them are like amazing personalities they are really good at what they do but it's not necessarily the good standard for a man to kind of look up to so they they don't know who they are the the youngsters so they they learn to how not to say hello they learn how to just fit in to just just that and they start within months i've seen it many times they start to turn into them as a person but they just don't know what they're doing because they are thinking you know oh i just want to be like them and i can relate because i was doing in a very different way but like the same thing and i think that's quite sad that it's, it's nobody's fault, and I'm not saying they are bad, but they could be better because they are bright, you know, young men, very capable, but not necessarily going down to the, you know, like, I don't even know, like, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to slander a man because that's really not my point. I have no problem, you know, with them. So that's, that's really not um, my point, but it's 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 so interesting because you've mentioned so much like just listening to your story um there is just so much to talk about I don't know if we'll fit it in to one hour but like just I mean the first thing that strikes me and it's probably because last night I did a talk at Fempeak about um women in tech and one of the strongest themes that came out from that discussion was the fact that 
women should not stay in toxic environments. And, you know, often we've studied so hard and we've built up so much experience, which then catapults us into environments that are toxic. And it sounds like that's exactly what happened. Like you built up all these skills, all this knowledge, um, all these connections and networks, which ultimately brought you into a toxic environment. Mm -hmm. And so one of the key messages of last night's talk was have the courage to get out, to pull yourself out of those toxic environments. Mm -hmm. And you did that, you know, going to London seems to have been like a, a real move of I'm doing this purely for me and what's best for me. Um, and what's crazy is that some women don't even, or not even just pe some people, okay? I really wanna get away from this like gender thing. Mm. Like some people don't even know that they are in toxic environments. And to really unravel that, takes a lot of self-awareness and that usually only comes with experience um it's a really tricky one to navigate because you know just like those young men who start in shipping you're already you know they're already on a course you know a, a, a sort of trajectory to get to a certain point and those older men that they are idolizing and looking up to don't represent a healthy destination mm. uh, and I think this happens across all industries not just shipping but like you know lots of different industries and so you know it took you 15 years to get to this point like do you think there is a way of avoiding the 15 years do we even want to avoid the 15 years um I think that the times are changing and the generation now is different than my generation. And I was really reflecting on this, like, why do I have to go through, you know, all of this? And um, I think that what, what we are doing, and, and this is for everyone. So whatever we are doing, it ripples to your peers. So the people like in the same era and generation, but you're paving the way for the future to come. So I think that youth now are more kind of, bright and capable and a bit more advanced because there were people you know like doing super hard work and dealing with the like the heavy stuff so I believe that they have a better chance because they are being taught by people who went through this journey so um i don't necessarily take time like the um, like the number of years as um as a kind of measuring how long this takes but i think that the way to cut it is to have someone who helps you to be aware because that's what I didn't have. And I had to figure it out myself. And towards the, the last two years, I had more and more um, help. And not, so the last two years was like a dramatic shifting than even like accelerated than before. Because I got into coaching and I became a life coach. And as a, as a result of, you know, um, that um, it really accelerated um, and and I also got into Buddhism when I went when I started in Dublin so I 
And that is definitely the 100% the best thing I've ever done to my life. Um, because the key to all of this is awareness and to really connecting to who you are, who you don't know who you are. But if you start practicing, you know, to really listening in, because that voice is always there, but that voice is not loud. Negativity is loud. And it's always like the, who do you think you are? What were you thinking? That's always a loud voice in our heads, right? So we can all like relate like, oh, it's never gonna work. Blah, 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 blah. That's, that's like familiar because those voices are loud. But like the, um, the, the inner voice is like the gut feeling, if you like, or, you know, that's not, it's not gonna scream, but it's there, like real, that kind of knowing. And we actually choose to go in the opposite direction, knowing some, somewhere deep down, we know that this is not really right, but we do it anyway, because of all the programming, because of all the, the survival mechanisms and the, all the masks that we put on to survive, because that becomes like a safe place, like a comfort zone. Um, so if, we have the good fortune to have someone like my brother, you know, who are you? You know, like that, but like that we have like a connection with, not just like a random person on the street, who are you? You know, because that's not really gonna work. Um, then that is the shortcut that will help you to really connect and see. Because I think the problem is nowadays, and, and it's always been that we are all very, very capable people on our own unique way. And we have, everyone has a very specific mission that only they can do because you are only influencing the people around you and then you are influencing the, the other people around you. So we have, you're very powerful in your own kind of circle, whether you acknowledge it or not. So you have this mission in this life to make this world a better place. And the way I see our generation, because, you know, like 80s, 90s, quite a hard, you know, era. And then the 2000s, like it's quite a lot of things happened and changed. And now it's again, it's definite. It's a very new era now. Mm -hmm. So we are a bridge that we know how, where we are really coming from and what we really had to kind of deal with. Um, but now it's, we are bridging that to this very new, and, and I believe that will be a very different era after that. And we have the fortune and the strength to be in between and create the bridge and I'm getting a bit emotional talking about this because probably is touching something in me as I'm talking that um I did all of this you know to help to help people and to show that yes you can and there is no there is no um lost time or you know there is everything was worth it mm -hmm. and you can help people who will come after you or in the same shoe right now to do it together and for the generation after for them not to take 15 years you know to to get to know themselves you know and everyone will have a path you can you know uh, influence that but I believe that we are here to help to create a better world in our way. And this is our way. So every woman who is in tech, science, shipping, you know, everywhere that we have a big mission to make this world a better place through our own journey and path. So everything everyone is going through is exactly right. And it's exactly how it should be. 
And the way to cut it, to answer your question, is to have someone helping you to raise your awareness inside and not outside. Because all of these worlds, tech, science, shipping, it's very noisy. It's a lot of things to distract you from who you are and be busy with what they want you to be. It's interesting because I have many women on this show who have all kinds of different stories, as we all do. Um, but what's fascinating is that some women are from generations where their mothers and their grandmothers and their great grandmothers did that work that we're doing. Mm. Because I really relate to you and your story because I feel like my life has been about doing the work, you know, developing that self awareness so that I resolve a lot of the pain that generations before me suffered. I know that my mum, for example, has always taken a very subordinate role because she comes from that Asian background where women were always less than. Mm. And I don't even want to think about what my grandmother went through. You know, my grandmother was a very educated woman, but spent all of her time at home raising five children. Mm. And her education was absolutely not acknowledged or appreciated or applied. Mm. And so, you know, I get to my generation and I want this lack of acknowledgement, lack of recognition, um, this, I want the muted woman in our lineage to stop. Women should not be muted. And I have two sisters. And, you know, my dad, who was very much the head of the household, raised three very strong women. And I feel like it's actually my role to, to sing, you know, to really have a voice because generations before me didn't. Um, but that's not everybody's story. And it's been so interesting on this show to hear women whose mothers, um, felt the same way that I feel, you know? So it's kind of like a staggered, not race, because we're not competing against each other, but it's like a staggered journey where some people start a bit further behind, some people are further ahead. And um, so I agree with you, like the 15 years is irrelevant. It's about treading one's own path. Um, you know, for anyone who is, listening who's not female like is this the ambition of women only or do men have a desire or even a duty to become self-aware in your opinion absolutely and i'm um i'm actually very um passionate about working with men in the future in my coaching um, because what I observed in in English culture in the past 10 years that here in among men and especially young men I know that the, in the UK the highest rate of death uh, in young men is suicide and that's because they're not encouraged to talk about their problems or, or pains because that is considered a weakness. So it's the culture is repress, repress, repress. And I don't think it's just here in the UK. It's more of a general, like the man has to be like, you know, keeping it together and always da -da -da, and don't cry and, you know, all of that. And I think that's very hard and I think they are suffering more than we do because we as women we tend to express more and not repress so much um, and I think there is a desire and it's 
the battle is with like the cultural kind of the perceiving or the perception of oh so now you are you know whining like a girl or you know that kind of attitude um so I do believe that it could be encouraged more and should be encouraged more among men as well to be aware um and I'm sure you know not everyone will be on board with that but there will be more responses than expected and I know that there are you know um movements and and people around that for mental health awareness um among men and especially young men um so I do believe that this is as much as needed as in women as much as needed in in men um yeah I mean we're almost coming to the end of speaking for an hour which completely blows my mind because <laughs> There's just so much that we could talk about. And, you know, I know that you and I, we just connect on um, such a profound level, probably because one of the major things we have in common is this need to unravel our inner journey mm -hmm. with an ambition to not just help ourselves and self-realize, but so that we can help other people. Um, on their journey and it is such a beautiful kind of circle of life that you and I are kind of very much into and you know I, I hope this conversation has provoked many ideas in our listeners but you know it's been amazing to have someone on this show who is not from the conventional science and tech path um, but why you are so valuable as a guest on this show is that, you know, the show is called Innovation. And the reason why I chose to call this podcast Innovation is because it is very much about an inner journey of innovating oneself, you know, coming up with new ideas, new directions, new perspectives, um, all with the ambition of being the best versions of ourselves and really fulfilling our inner potential and I really hear that in your own journey like you are so wanting to be your best and for that reason like it's just been so incredible listening to you but as a sort of like last message what can my listeners take away from this conversation in terms of like next steps? Like, you know, everyone's gonna have the day ahead, you know, whichever time you listen to this episode, you know, what should people be taking away with them as a result of our conversation? That everyone, is really unique and powerful with a very specific mission in this life. And the sooner you take steps in your own way to discover who that self is, the more rewarding your life is going to be. Yeah, that's exactly what I took away from this. That's exactly the mission of this show. And, you know, it's been beautiful talking to you, Anna Maria, because, you know, whether you're in tech, science, history, geography, it doesn't really matter. You know, we are all on a very beautiful journey to self-realize, you know, especially those people that really want to live a life of purpose um, and of service to others. I think this ability to really... Um, uncover why we're here is such an essential um an essential pursuit and so thank you for provoking all of that in us today it's been amazing talking with you 
Thank you, Shani. I really appreciate your invite and it's my good fortune to be here. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> oh, uh, let me put the thing back on gallery view. Oh, thank you, Anna Maria. My pleasure. This was great. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful. I've never done anything like this before. <laughs> really uh, a powerful conversation. I feel like we just kind of skimmed the surface. Mm. You know, there's so much like for us to chat about. I just feel like I really, really, um, I just really, I feel like I've been with you mm. for years, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, I really got your journey. Mm -hmm. And it's so beautiful that your observations of all of it, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know, it's so beautiful that you see now that the engagement and then Switzerland. And I would love to learn more about your actual sort of like your your learning points. Mm -hmm. you know, because it is really interesting hearing what you attracted mm -hmm. in those 15 years because I think what we attract is where we're at mm. you know and mm. it sounds like you were always like followed by asshole men <laughs> no, yeah like, you're always yeah. followed by kind of very like male macho yeah you know it's that strong masculine energy mm -hmm. I know why why because I was abused as a child. So going through that, this helped me to work through that and get to the roots. But in the beginning, because you don't know, because it's so deeply embedded, you just attract this and you don't know why. And it becomes very confusing. So that's why the self-awareness, so without the self-awareness, I would probably marry my fiance not even knowing that and that was a really nice relationship um and i would probably get married somehow this will surface anyway from the depths of you know my life because i know buddhism really triggered it for me to be self-aware of that and then we would be maybe having some children and then I would become very miserable and we would get a divorce and I would go down to some bitter path that maybe somewhere down the line, I would meet, you know, something that helps me to get back on track. But by, that, by then the damage would have been a lot. So even though these, you know, these 15 years was not like a catwalk, <laughs> um but still there is no damage to anyone's life really so yeah. it's you yeah. know i mean so it's just what you just said so many people live out that without knowing that theater because you and this is why we're so connected because I was with a man for seven years who was also just such a beautiful human being. And I could have gone down that marriage, kids. And I always said to people, because they were like, oh, you really let a good guy go. And I'm like, I know. But the thing is, if I had done this and married him, had kids, it would have come out at some point. 100%. I chose to not do that. So many people don't make that choice. They just say, you know what? Okay, let's just have the kids. Let's just get married. Mm -hmm. And then they're like having affairs and getting themselves into so much trouble, getting divorced. And you know what's so interesting is that I didn't choose to get involved in that theater, but I'm with a man who did. He's divorced, two kids. Mm -hmm. And often on a daily basis, I'm clearing up his stuff and he makes it sound like I'm the crazy one. Mm. And it's really insane because, you know, I'm sitting here on Zoom 
talking to someone who also made the decision, the strongest decision, the one that takes the most courage to say, I'm not going to blind myself. I'm going to just look at it. That is not someone who's insane. That's someone who's facing their stuff, you know, and, you know, it just, it, it makes my heart break hearing what you had to go through um it also is so inspiring hearing you say I went through shit but I am resolving it Mm. so brave Mm. um I don't know what I went through to be on the same path where I'm resolving it but one of the major stands that we need to take is to not listen to people judging our journey Mm. and that's the major take home for me today, which obviously will not be in the podcast. Mm-hmm. But like the major take home is I need to stay strong when people are judging my journey. Because with you, you have a very clear understanding of the abuse you went through, which is having an effect on the choices you make today and for the past 15 years. I don't have a clear understanding of my abuse, if there were, even was any. Um, and because of that unclear understanding, I listen to people's judgments of my journey because like mm-hmm. people saying, oh, look at your family. They're so nice. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, the picture perfect, whatever. And it's like, no, you know, anyway, it's a very private thing. What other people's, co- you know, other people's commentary of my choices is mm-hmm. none of their business, mm-hmm. none of my business. And it's like, you know. Yeah, I mean, we're all good. What we're doing is good. Yeah, yeah. And I know that because shipping, I didn't want to say it in like podcast, it's very animalistic, you know? And people having affairs, it's like, ooh, then I'm the cool guy. But if you do that as a woman, then you're a bitch and you're a whore. Yeah. So, um, So it's very there, but I didn't want to put it there because then it's judgy and, you know, but actually it is. So, so I had to go through all of that and I was judged so many times and people were thinking, oh, Anna Maria sleeps with everyone, which is not even true, but they don't care. And I also noticed that, that that's not the point. The point is, it's kind of like being as close as I get to being a celebrity, because that's what they do with celebrities, right? Like, who cares about the truth? They just make up some sort of, yeah, they are like that. So it's a bit like that in shipping, bless you. So, um, but I know that all of this was for me to really get rid of. And I'm also, I also know that this is not just this lifetimes, you know, karma, it's like past. You bring it with you kind of shit. And I can see uh, my grandmother's, journey and so compared to that I'm you know I'm really good better off but but I you know it's like I really took this stand that it stops here yeah so I'm like the last person needs to experience this kind of it's just wrong and it wasn't right that really helps with the motherhood Mm. subject Mm. because a lot of people are like what's wrong with you you perfectly healthy such such great genes to pass on it's like because I want the cycle of suffering to stop with me Mm. I don't want to pass this on to children I want to sort it out with me Mm. you know if I have time my biological clock's still ticking and I feel resolved and I can have children great but it hasn't worked out that way Mm. not yet but um and it's also, I just trust that whatever needs to happen for the, that is the best for everyone it will, because we don't necessarily know why we're in it. So the same thing that when, when I broke up my engagement, it was so difficult, but I knew that it's the right thing to do. But looking back, it's like, it was the absolute only right thing to do. But when you're in it, you're like, I I, I don't know. I just, I'm hoping that I'm doing the right thing, you know? So that kind of trust that 
the knowledge will come later when you look back that oh my god thank god that you know it was that way but when you're in it you are like mm, you know maybe it's this maybe it's that so just the trust has to be there that whatever is the best for the future you don't see that is what needs to happen whatever that is and then just let that go and trust that because your life is here to support you your life is not against you so your life is not here to make you suffer or be miserable so if it has to happen in will in some miraculous way and if it doesn't it doesn't and you will know why and it's all good so that deeper trust in that you know the life force that why do you breathe you don't know who what makes you breathe you know, or what makes your heart you know, that force, that your life force, that you don't see it, it's not like plugged into some, you know. So that is the higher intelligence in you, why you exist and you have the soul mission and the purpose, you know. So that thing that you can't really touch, but it's definitely there because you're here, we are breathing and you don't have to think about it, it just happens. So that kind of intelligence knows what's best. And, you know, so that's not here to destroy you, but it's, it's quite the opposite. Yeah. So whatever it is, that's exactly what's going to happen. You just need to stand in that space. Because it's bigger than, oh, do I want children? Do I want children? You know, like it's a bigger trust thing. in place. It's a place of trust. And that's very difficult. Yeah. But that's the lesson. Trust. That's my lesson, 100%. Mm. Yeah. Mine too. But that's why we're here, because it's, it's easier to hold, you know, the lantern for another person's journey but then it brightens your own journey as well so as you help others you realize something in yourself as a result thanks for listening and please do subscribe to this podcast and maybe even rate and review it if you can the more ratings and reviews and the more interest from those trusty algorithms which could help to increase the reach of this show you can watch the video recording of this conversation on youtube on my new series called esteemed And as always, it's about self-discovery and self-evolution on innovation. So, as always, be kind and loving to yourselves, and I wish you all a great week.